Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Yeah, the old clock says it's five o'clock. Beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Uh, here we go with another beer that's, from what I hear in red, uh, might be a little on the tart sour side. So, trying to get my arms and palate around, wrapped around these beers. Uh, some of my subs said, hey, you just give up. But I uh, don't give up that easy. Uh, I want to acquire that taste uh, to appreciate these uh, tart and sour beers, these wild ale beers and stuff. So. Uh, we're going to give it another shot today, so let's see what we got with this. This is Brooklyn Breweries. K is for Creek, or Creek, K-R-I-E-K. -E uh, this was a brewed once beer. It's got 2015 on the back label. I don't know exactly when in 21 in uh, 2015 it was done. This is not a cheap beer, guys. It's still got the price tag on the back here, $21.99. This is a $22 bottle of beer. Ouch. It's a big bottle though, it's a 750 milliliter, uh, corked and caged, so uh, let's get on with it and see what we end up with here, guys. Uh, according to what's on the label here on the front, uh, it says ale brewed with honey, it doesn't say anything about being sour or tart on the front of the bottle, and that's what I read when I, when I bought it. Ale brewed with honey, dark candied syrup, and orange peel aged in bourbon barrels on whole cherries. Brooklyn Brewery, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, 10.1% alcohol by volume. That's what I read when I bought this beer. Was not aware that it was a wild ale and tart and sour. Of course, it's got cherries on the label up here where the big uh, Brooklyn label uh, B is on the front. But, uh, and on the back here, it says, when B is for Belgium, you find that K is for Creek, Creek, or however it's pronounced. The cherry is often added to Lambics and other sour Belgian beers. Our American take on Creek combines our dark Abbey Ale, 20 pounds of dried whole Michigan uh, Montmorency cherries, six months of aging in bourbon barrels, and a final bottle of fermentation using champagne and wild Brettomyces yeast. After a full year of waiting, we're ready to share this dry, fruity, expansive beer with you. Beer is for drinking, not hoarding, and K is for crack, uh, or creek, however you want to pronounce that. So, uh, it says expansive. I might add expensive, too, on, on top of that. So, very nice bottle. I did not read the back of the label. I just read that price on the back of it. It was $22. I'm going, ouch. Well... We'll see what this one brings. Uh, the commercial description says exactly the same thing uh, that I just read on there. Uh, it says it's actually got some food pairings on here. Poultry, duck, pork, goat cheeses, desserts, and rich cheeses. Uh, it says availability Q1 2015. I'm saying that's first quarter of 2015. So, the food pairings on Beer Advocates say... Cheeses of peppery, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp, and your pungent cheeses. Glass for a flute, tulip, oversized wine glass. Got my favorite glass today. And can be set up for long periods under the proper conditions. So, that's all we need to talk about. So, we'll stop talking and start uncorking. See if we can get this thing out without having to have power pliers. Oh, yeah. And I'm when they add additional yeast, when they bottle this stuff, it scares me. I don't want this shit all over the place. Big pop. Great big pop. <laughs> 
Man, it looks like it's staying in the bottle. That's a good thing. Into the glass we go. Now, it's allowed to be really carbonated with that big pop, so I'm not going to pour it too aggressive. That's all we're going to do for right now. And I would say it's probably got some heavy sediment uh, on the bottom of the bottle on that final pour down there. So I imagine the one we're going to pour for our glass for her will be a lot darker than what this one is. And you can see it's, it's growing. It's still growing. Just like that uh, other one we had from Evil Twin. Not quite as, ex as growing as fast, but the bubbles are really... As you can see, it's coming over top of the glass now. The bubbles are really going crazy in this glass. <clears throat> it is a rich, red, murky brown color, guys. I can see a little bit of light, but the bubbles, the carbonation is just off the chain here. As you can see, it's still above the glass. It's not overflowing the glass like the Evil Twin beer did, but it is highly carbonated. And you can tell with that big, massive pop when I took the cork out, like a champagne. Sometimes the champagne doesn't come spewing out, sometimes it does. So, let's get a nose on and see if we can get anything with all this massive foam, two fingers of head. Definitely getting the cherries in there. The candied sugar is there. Uh, the uh, the bread and mice splunk is there. And it definitely has some sourness to it, so. Let's give it a taste and see what we got. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's just not going crazy like the Evil Twin beer did, but it is a highly carbonated beer, guys. Cheers. Not too bad. That's pretty tasty. The tartness and the sourness is not off the chain like a lot of them are. That tart of darkness was, uh, was one of them. It's, it's an exceptional beer by a lot of the sour, uh, tart beer drinkers that really love that beer. A little bit over the top for me. This is, this is more my speed. This is, will help me get into this style of beer, not being so tart. What makes my mouth do one of those numbers, so... That's nice. This will help me ease into this style of beer. That is very nice. Very, very different than what I typically drink, guys. When I picked this up and read the front label, I was expecting some kind of either bourbon barrel, barley wine style beer or an old ale style beer. This is still this is pretty tasty. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised after reading some comments in the back label that it's this not over over the top sour. Uh, I like this. It's pretty tasty. Well, let me sip on it for a little bit. This is 10.1 percent alcohol. Uh, definitely a sipper in this monster size bottle. Definitely enough to share. And you'd want to share it after spending twenty two dollars. You want to share that with at least one more person, if not two. So, let me sip on it and come back and see where it ends up. I'm impressed right now. I was expecting a lot more sour and tartness than I'm getting. Alright guys, I'm back. I've been sipping on it about 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so. Uh, this, to me, this is more in line for to get into uh, some of your uh, tart or sour beers, like what, you, what I'm trying to do. And not like the Tart of Darkness and some of the other ones that are more than likely exceptional, well-made tin beers, but they're just a little over the top for my palate. It's it a stage. So I enjoyed this one a little bit more than some of those heavy tart. And you know, and, and it's just like it's just like going from from Budweiser or, or whatever, or maybe even a Sam Adams Boston Lager to a Hop Slam or a Heady Topper or a Pliny the Elder. Uh, the hop profile is just so much different 
than what you're used to or your palate's used to. It just overwhelms and blows your palate or, or somebody that's trying to, to get into a stout or, 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 or imperial stout or something like that and you're going from a 5 or 6, maybe even a 7% to a 11, 12, 13, even 14%. Uh, it just it overwhelms your palate if you're not used to that. And a lot of those uh, uh, A beers or 10 beers, as a lot of the reviewers are calling uh, some of these uh, stouts and, and uh, tart beers or wild ale beers, uh, once your palate is used to that and you're used to drinking that style of beer, uh, you, you can appreciate it a little bit more. But somebody like me that's, that's trying to get into those styles, those that tartness and sourness is just off the chain for me. And it's, Next to my mouth go. So this this was a little more enjoyable for me, uh, and and with that being said, uh, uh, I need to e you need to ease into those style of beers uh, instead of grabbing the top of the line sour beer that gets ten and, and, and A's from everybody and you're not used to that that much sourness or that much tartness or or whatever so I enjoyed this one I I really did I, I, I could drink this I mean this this wasn't so sour or so tart that uh, it, it made my mouth go crazy so very nice Just enough tartness for me to enjoy it without it being overpowering to me. So, I really like this one. And it's a good thing since I paid $22 for this bottle of beer. <laughs> so, uh, in the other half, I thought it was kind of tart too, but uh, her palace is basically the same stage mine as that. So, uh, we don't drink a lot of these beers, and, and uh, you, you got to get used to them. You got to get accustomed to them. You, you just can't go from an IPA or, or a stout into a sour or wild ale that, that has that massive tartness to it. So I enjoyed this one. This is very nice. I, I need to ease into this style, guys. So uh, for me, uh, I do think it's an A beer for me. Now, one, two, three, five years down the road, I, I might say this is a B beer. But right now, I, I think it's an A beer. So I'm going to give it to eight. I'm going to give it to A minus. Uh, I did enjoy it. It was nice. Not too tart for my palate. Not too sour for my palate. So, numeric rating on this one, guys. For me, uh, I would give this a 90 or a 91. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was nice. Over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 88 in a very good range. And Rate Beer says 89 uh, and 46 in overall and 46 in the style. So, 89, 88, and a 90 for me. We're pretty close there. So, I enjoyed this one. It's nice. If you've been having this one from Brooklyn Brewery, uh, K is for Crick or Crick or Creek or however you want to call that. Uh, let me know what you think. It was nice. I've been sitting on this one for a while, so uh, I enjoyed it. Nice final beer of the evening, guys. So if you had it, let me know what you think. We'll back tomorrow. Let's see what's in the fridge. See you then.